Channeling the masters at this time might appear to be a daunting task, for the expectations are high. Either is the expectation of the ego that the world may crumble, crumble into dust, and its sufferings may also increase. And also there are the expectations of spirit, that a Garden Eden may be created on this earth that will resemble what is known in higher dimensions. Heaven and Hell are subjective experiences. These are the experiences that tell us how far away have we traveled from God. If we are reactive to life, we are addicted to pain and we use pain to create a wall between us and the self. What now is of great importance for humanity is to observe its own reactivity. You may say you do not seek suffering, you do not seek pain, but reactivity is indeed the addiction to pain. Because pain offers you the illusion of a false self. It is that limitation that many beings as of yet find so attractive. The immersion in a construct, in a bubble, in a box of thought, that creates a sense of limited self is so attractive that many accept great suffering and great pain to maintain such a state of existence. And yet it is the state of ego, it is the state of separation. Now when this one here is channeling the masters, you must understand that to channel the masters, one must be one with the masters. Therefore, a barrier must be removed. To truly speak from one's heart, to truly speak from a space of no separation, where lower mind and higher mind meet in harmony, where the higher mind has brought peace to the lower mind and starts expressing itself through the lower mind, through the physical vessel in this reality that you perceive as the earth plane. In order to be creators, in order to create the reality we prefer, we need to be aware of our reactions. If a human being experiences quite adverse reactions to many situations and experiences to be offended in many situations, what they do believe is that they are a victim to the experience, but indeed they are not. By charging those experiences energetically with emotions, they're choosing them. They're choosing to generate identity, that means ego, from these experiences. When your mind says that it is unhappy because of other beings around you, that you are victims to being ar beings around you, either to systems, to political systems, religious systems, or any type of structure that you feel is obstructing your path to happiness, then this is confusion. In truth, the spiritual seeker will very, very quickly find out that happiness is not the way, for happiness is elusive and temporary and attached to circumstances, objects of desire that may come and pass. When in truth, joy and bliss and peace is now, is always now, because now is eternity. Now is not a place and time. Now is not a moment. It is not a chain of moments. Now is eternity. It is the timeless you that can be accessed by being fully present and fully accepted and by being non-reactive. But as long as you are reactive, you energize what you believe you do not desire, but indeed you desire it because the pain leads to a sense of self. How many beings say that they are limited, that they cannot choose differently because of memory? How many beings will say, I have been abused in the past, therefore I cannot choose differently, therefore I have to show dysfunctional behavior? This is untrue. In this very moment, this eternal moment that is unchanging, you can always reflect, reevaluate what reality you prefer. And for you to make it, through this ascension process, it is of the uttermost importance to stop being reactive to any sort of experience that you truly do not prefer on soul level.
But if you are really active, you keep energizing the ego and will experience it on a loop, therefore lowering your energy frequency and investing into a lower timeline reality. Overcoming reactivity is the end of violence. Because in a truly creative process, violence does not occur. A creative process is an inclusive process. And it's not that false inclusivity that is preached by certain organizations on planet Earth at this time, who use the term of unity or inclusivity to actually divide people further. But it is the unseparated mind in which everything exists at the same time. So the action from that higher mind expressed through the lower mind will be total. It will include all knowing. And therefore, I cannot produce further karma as in the idea of negative karma, as in the idea of karma that creates further suffering. If one truly acts from the empty mind, which simply means that the lower mind ceases activity and the higher mind begins expressing itself from the I am through the higher self to the spirit that you are to the person that you are, this is the link. There's the telepathic link from the highest to the lowest. And when through the mystical practice, all obstruction is removed from this chain of expression, you will act as a unit where all these supposedly parts of you or limitations of you actually link up as a unit and cease to act separately. But you will act from the highest to the lowest. And therefore, your expression will be harmonious and not in conflict with your environment or your situation. No matter what you believe, if you believe to be spiritual, if you believe to be religious, if you believe to be materialistic, whatever you believe, even those who have created a spiritual identity, be aware that identity is the ego. And when you have created a spiritual identity, but you're still reactive to life, you're still playing victim, you're still delegating your creative powers to something outside of you that does not exist because everything comes from you. And if you believe in powerlessness, if you believe in victimhood, you will create with your full power a reality in which you are the victim. And in that way, you reinforce the ego and feel it is proven. In this pivotal time in human history, it is important to understand that this is the soul harvest. Any decisions that are made in this year, 2021, right now, will have great effect. They will determine into which reality you graduate. If you believe in fear, if you believe in victimhood, which is a belief in self-centeredness, which is a belief that the world needs to serve you and that you don't need to serve the world because you're underprivileged, if that is your belief, you energize a reality where you will experience a sense of powerlessness. And by saying that you do not create this reality, this is the ego delusion. The ego says, I'm not creating this reality. I'm a victim to it. But by saying you're separate from it, you create the experience of separation, therefore the experience of loneliness, therefore the experience of disconnection, therefore the experience of dysfunctional a dysfunctional sense of relationship, of not really getting in touch with what is real. This is a valid experience in this universe, as is any experience in this universe valid, and within the love of the Creator, all experiences are valid. But should you truly choose ascension, there's a definite path to take. Even though ultimately no choice in the universe is wrong, if you choose the path of, the, of ascension, there are relative mistakes that you can make when it comes to the path of ascension. For those who choose the path of ascension, the victim identity needs to be abandoned. There is not a single ascendant master who knows himself to be a victim. They know themselves to be creators. They know themselves to be sovereign beings. They know themselves to be infused with the spark of soul fire creation. And they will not at any point in time deny responsibility for what they are experiencing. 
So when one claims full responsibility in truth, one claims full sovereignty and full freedom. If there are violent experiences in your life, exit them. If you're not exiting them, ask yourself, what are you generating from this experience? What are you generating from being bullied by a boss or by a partner? Are you not using them as a scapegoat to avoid ascension? Are you afraid of your own powers? Are you afraid of the light of truth? Are we using others in order to avoid realizing that we are creators? It is easy to blame the politicians. It is easy to blame the religious leaders. It is easy to delegate responsibility outside of yourself. But there is just one self, there is just one awareness. They are not units of awareness. There is not one human being and another human being and another human being and an animal. All have awareness, all are the self. Consciousness may be born through experience. Through catalyst, individuality might be attained. And yet that individuality is witnessed by awareness, therefore all is the self. To pretend to be separate from the self, to blame God is to blame yourself. To say God has given you these experiences. God is punishing you. Well, in a way, in a way, if you act separate, you experience yourself separate from God, so you blame God. Should you know yourself, there's no one left to blame. And from that self-knowledge, from knowing that everybody is self, how can you not love everybody? Love does not decide to shine on this one or on that one like the sun doesn't decide it. The sun radiates without discrimination, such as love. Humans have idea of partial love, romantic love, love for the partner, love for the mother, for the father, but it's all the love, the one love. And when we separate it, when we say we only love here and there, we do not love. This is the illusion of the ego where it says, here I begin, here I end, and I pretend not to be the creator. That is why for humanity at this time, it is important to understand that the ego cannot exist without separate mind. Separate mind is the belief that identity is constructed by thought when in truth it is not. The experience of automatic thought is the experience of one's karmic decisions over hundreds and hundreds of years. You might have thoughts right now that you might have had 400 years ago. And they are repeating. This is the karmic structure, the mind that you've taken from one life to another. But in truth, the only thing that remains persistent is the awareness of the thought. And therefore, the awareness is the self. The limited self that you carry from incarnation to incarnation is nothing but a mirror that makes you conscious of your choices. And in that sense is the karmic resonance that repeats and repeats and repeats. And should you react to your own thought as you react to life, life is a mirror, your mind is a mirror, your body is a mirror, those realities as such, those relative limited realities are an expression of your consciousness, are a reflection of your consciousness. And when you reject them, you truly are not understanding that you're not a victim to your experience, but the creator of it. These are the accumulations of actions of experiments within the energetic field that you now get to experience. Now it is the time to make choices. What do you prefer? Which experiences would you like to leave your, your energetic field? Which experiences would you now prefer? From the wisdom that you have gathered over a long time, trust your heart, trust your intuition. Your mind will mess it up. Your mind will mess it up because the mind of so many is not healed yet. For the mind to be fully functioning as a service to the higher mind, the mind needs to understand that it's not the creator of reality, but that it is, in that sense, a translator of physical reality to spirit and of spirit to physical reality. It is a bridge between realities and an adapter, if you will, that can express the higher mind blueprint in a creative, practical way, way within space-time. But before it understands this purpose, it has been trained 
in human society to perceive itself as separate and as individual and so it will try to keep borders, it will try to keep control and it will not let the higher mind in. Unless great suffering has led to a humbling and through the humbling a cessation of activity has let the higher mind in and therefore the no mind is attained, the state of samadhi of satori is attained the state of moksha is attained and from the state of moksha the higher mind will start expressing itself through the oversoul, through the spirit, through the lower mind into physical reality and therefore elevating the physical reality by radiating creator light to a higher dimensional plane. This is why the human in truth cannot make change. The illusion of being human is the illusion of being separate. It is the identification with body-mind and therefore Maya, the illusion, Samsara. In order to overcome Samsara, it is of importance to understand that mind carries no true identity. It is just the interplay of ancient forces that you've generated over hundreds of years of karmic activity. In order to go beyond karma, one needs to go beyond mind. And within infinity, self is realized. Within the now, which is infinity, self, self is known, mind is overcome. Mind then begins to die into the higher mind. Mind is being put on like a glove by the higher mind and mind simply becomes the acting instrument of the higher mind on the physical plane, but will cease all separate activity and this is the ego death experience. This is to be attained in order to ascend into a higher reality. This is our offering for humanity at this time.